Gluten talk. When baking sourdough bread, temperature is a major factor between a successful bread and a very disappointing, super sticky or very flat failure. Some bakers have reported that in summer times their sourdough magically becomes way better than in winter times. Well, let's finally answer the question. What's better, warm versus cold fermentation? And what provides you the tastier sourdough bread? Bear with me and enjoy this super exciting experiment. I made two times exactly the same dough and today I want to show you the difference between warm sourdough fermentation and cold sourdough fermentation. I'm super interested to learn what's better. The specs of the dough. 350 grams of bread flour, 50 grams of whole wheat flour, 320 grams of water, around 40 grams of liquid starter, so final hydration roughly around 360 grams, 90%, so a quite hydrated dough. And of course, not to forget the salt, 2% salt in there, that's 8 grams of the salt. Now I extracted two small fermentation samples from the dough, and what I want to find out is, the moment both of those doubled, which of those has a lower pH value? The pH value is interesting because you have microorganisms in here, mostly yeast and bacteria. The yeast leavens your dough. This is what gives you the size increase. The bacteria creates the lactic acid and acetic acid, typical for sourdough. That gives the sourdough the sour taste. Now, some people like to have more leavening power rather than a sour taste and the temperature as a major factor and my hypothesis is that the warmer it is the more the yeast part of your sourdough is working i was running an experiment on testing whether you can knead your dough too much and then i overheated one of the doughs because i was kneading it too much in my stand mixer and i noticed that the warm dough increased a lot in size but wasn't as sour and that's the reason for why i'm conducting this experiment now the good news is that we can measure the acidity using a pH meter. Now the acidity also depends on what kind of acids you have. Lactic acid has a different acidity than acetic acid. But what I can do is, I can, the moment both of them have reached the desired size increase, I can compare the pH value. And then I know which dough is more sour at which volume increase. And that allows me to see the differences of the fermentation at different temperatures. So I'm super excited to test this because I think this could be very, very, very eye-opening. So I'm gonna be leaving one at room temperature, which is around 25 degrees Celsius right now in Germany, and the other one at 30 degrees Celsius. So I expect the one that I have at 30 degrees Celsius to increase in size quite a lot faster than the one which is only at 25 degrees Celsius. So we are pretty much replicating what's happening when you're living in the tropics. So high temperature. I'm gonna be giving each of the doughs just one stretch and fold similar to my lazy overnight sourdough recipe shortly before they doubled in size. I think that's great. You don't have to do so many stretch and folds. This is an excellent way to save a little bit of time. Okay, fermentation, now start. Now to set the exact temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, I'm using my homemade do-it-yourself proofing box. It has a heating mat there and then a thermostat controller. So all we have to do is press this magical button. Right now it's around 24-ish, but that's gonna increase to 30 degrees Celsius. The dough will sit right in there. If you're interested in making one, please do check out the video that I'm linking right here. Okay, dough is fermenting, see you later. Hello again, so it's around six hours later and this sample here with the hot dough has doubled in size and the other one with the room temperature is lagging a little bit behind. So that's exactly what I expected to happen, all good so far. The dough here from the hot, the hot dough has nicely increased in size. Check out how nice and bubbly it is. Now it's time to measure the pH value, which I'm super excited to see. Normally when I shape it, it's at around a pH of 4.2-ish, sometimes also a little bit lower. Generally what you need to know is the longer you ferment, the more the gluten network is broken down by the protease enzyme inside of your flour and the lactic acid bacteria that munch your gluten. So let's check this. The longer they fermented it, the more acid they accumulated and the lower the pH is. The pH of the water where I'm living at is, as you can see, around 8.2-ish. 
the lower the pH, the more acid you have inside. So let's check this. pH of around 4.25. And I'm on purpose using the small sample and not the main dough. The main dough could lag a little bit behind for whatever reason, but I wanna compare the samples which have the same size exactly and the same volume. It could be that the volume of this dough actually didn't double as much as it did here. And that's why I think the sample to use a sample is more reliable. So very interesting. But regardless, let's also check the main dough one more time. And it's in around the same area, which is a good sign. Okay, let's shape this now. I'm gonna shape this. And then in a little bit, once this doubled, we will check back with the other dough as well. All right, that's our first shape though. It's now going into the fridge overnight because I don't have time to bake this now. I wanna bake this tomorrow. Hello again. So around two hours later, the second dough is also ready and the hotter dough has now more than tripled in size in that period. So just check this out, how much of a difference the additional temperature has. Let's check the pH value of the colder fermented dough. So the pH is at around 4.3-ish now. And let's also, to be sure, check our dough. 4.2-ish, 4.1-ish even. Interesting. One thing that I should do is I should probably extract this from the jar to measure the pH a little bit better. So even here, the pH is still at around the same level. And here it is a little bit lower on the main though. But still, if I look at the size increase, then both of them, as far as I can say, have been on roughly the same level the moment they doubled in size. So what does this mean? This means that even if it's warmer where you live, just based on the temperature, you won't have a faster working portion of yeast or bacteria in your dough, at least based on this experiment. So around a five degrees Celsius in difference seems to have not caused a major change in terms of fermentation speed. So I'm gonna be shaping this dough anyways, and then I'm very curious to compare both of them to see how they are in terms of crumb in the end. So let's shape the second dough and then check them out next to each other after baking. Oh, and before that, just one more time as a reference, our dough sample that now more than triple in size is now at a pH of 4.1-ish. While shaping, I couldn't notice a difference in terms of how the dough felt. Both of them felt very similar in terms of consistency, how fluffy they were and so on. Since this dough is a little bit colder than the other dough, I'm just gonna be letting this sit at room temperature for 15 minutes, one five, sorry for my German. And then this is going to go in the fridge. In the fridge, this dough continues to ferment because it takes quite a while to cool down the whole dough mass. That's why the fridge is always a little bit unpredictable, but it also helps with your scheduling. I want to bake both of them together tomorrow, and that's where the fridge comes in quite handy. I would say the, for the first six hours or so, of course it depends a little bit on your fridge, your dough still continues to ferment and afterwards the fermentation speed really comes to a halt. Generally speaking, around at six degrees Celsius, everything below means your dough is at a standstill. So if you're a beginner, what I would probably do if you're just baking one dough at the time, leave this at room temperature, wait until the finger poke test passes, put this in the freezer for 30 minutes, and then just bake it directly. That's really such an excellent way to make sure that you always prove your dough exactly on time. However, if you don't have time, then your fridge is the second best option. So see you again tomorrow. Bye bye.
Good morning. Our two does have slept over the night in the fridge. I'm sprinkling them with a little bit of semolina flour so they don't stick. I'll be baking both of them next to each other on a stove. This is the one which fermented at a hotter temperature and this is the one which fermented at a lower temperature. Let's load them. And this is my default baking setup. The tray on top is very important. Boiling water below and this is where they'll be baking for the first 25 minutes with steam. Upper bottom heat and then I'm using 230 degrees Celsius for the first 25 minutes. That's where you get oven spring. Let me pause here for a second. You might be wondering why there is a random picture of a cute little cat right now. Okay, there is actually no explanation. This was totally random, just like most of the ads. So, sorry. Now, on a more pressing matter, have you ever seen a sourdough on a camel? Well, I take Brad Pitt wherever I travel. My goal is to create the most traveled sourdough on this planet. Hopefully, one day I can make this channel my full-time job and geek out even more about sourdough. If you want to support me on my quest, please consider subscribing or buying some of this cool merchandise, such as the sourdough infographic. Infographic contains all the information you need to master the sourdough process from start to finish. Plus, it might look pretty cool inside of your kitchen. Now, let me end this very annoying advertisement by showing you an additional bonus picture of Brad Pitt on the road. It can be a bumpy road making sardo, you know? Okay, that was a very poor joke. I'm out of here, bye. And voila, the two beauties. The one fermented at room temperature and the one coming out of the proofing box. Visually, I don't think that there is a big difference. Both of them have an amazing ear. They look great. This one is a little bit wider but this one here was also sitting a little bit closer to the cooling element of the fridge so that could also have caused this so as far as i can say there is no major difference at least from the visual perspective here are a few more blisters but that might also just be uh, a random change i think what you need to consider is that this dough in general proves a little bit longer inside of the fridge because it's hotter than this one this means that this dough which we had at a higher temperature, has just more fermentation activity going on. And it takes a while for the fermentation activity to come to a halt. So of course, the hotter the dough is when you put it into the fridge, the more it will continue to proof inside of your fridge. Let's slice both of them open and compare. The hotter one. Beautiful crumb, just exactly the way how I like it. Not too airy, but very, very fluffy. This is my personal favorite crumb. The colder one. Also looking very beautiful. Nice crumb as well. It seems to be a little bit more open, but that might just have been my shaping technique one more time both of them next to each other the hotter one and the colder one both turned out really 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 well nice bunny shape here too so i couldn't necessarily say that one is better than the other all right let's give this a shot in terms of taste cute little bunnies here <laughs> So what some people are saying that temperature changes the flavor and it makes sense. The question is whether my German taste buds are able to taste the difference. Let's start with the colder one. Great crust, but I don't notice such a tang on it. Let's try the warmer one. Great flavor as well, also not such a big tang. The tang is coming from a longer fermentation. Do I notice a difference between those two? Nope, I don't. They taste both equally as good. Another interesting experiment would be to do this with a way bigger temperature difference. In my case, the temperature difference was only five degrees. So what would happen if we were to use even more extreme conditions? That would be interesting to find out. 
I would be super curious to hear your thoughts on this experiment. What did you notice yourself when baking sourdough? Please do drop a comment in the comment section. What do you think could I have improved? Was it a fair comparison? With sourdough experiments, it's always very hard to make sure that you have equal conditions between both of the samples that you're comparing. So thank you very much for watching and as always, may the gluten be with you.